So yeah, I mean, either on the Xbox Series S or the X, this is definitely some of the best GameCube and Wii emulation I've seen out of a pre-built system so far. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at some GameCube and Wii emulation on the Xbox Series S. Now this will also work on the X, but I personally prefer using the S given the price and form factor. But either way you look at it, you're going to get amazing performance out of either of those consoles. Now one thing you might notice here is I've got the Dolphin emulator, I've also got a PS2 emulator right here on my dashboard, and that's because I'm in retail mode. Now this will work in dev mode, but personally I prefer using retail mode because I really don't like swapping back and forth. And if I head over to my games and apps, you'll notice that I've got Duck Station installed, I've got RetroArch, I've got Flycast. So I've got a lot of emulators installed on this. And you can definitely get this up and running in retail mode if you want to. Everything you need to know is over on Gamer13's Discord. I'll leave a link in the description to this GitHub page. This will take you over to the Discord. You need to read through everything, but there's some great information over there. But if you don't want to deal with Discord and go the retail route, you can always go with dev mode. And that's really because we've got an awesome Dolphin port known as Dolphin UWP from Sir Mangler over on GitHub. You can download this and install it the dev mode route if you want to. You can actually get this up and running quite easily. And you know, for the longest time, we've been able to run GameCube and Wii games using RetroArch on our Xboxes. But you've never seen performance like this. This is a standalone Dolphin emulator ported specifically over to the Xbox. And like I mentioned, it's known as Dolphin UWP. So we've got a really simple interface right now, but it is functional. I'm running all of my games from a USB drive. In fact, all of my files are running from a USB right now. And I've got a bunch installed. I wanted to test out some harder to run games, you know, that don't work very well on lower end systems. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Now there are a few things to note here. If you do get this up and running, you will have to configure your controllers on a Windows PC and then transfer the Dolphin INI over to your USB drive. Unfortunately, there's no controller configuration built into Dolphin UWP just yet, and it's got a very simple interface once we get into games. I mean, we've got a few settings that we can mess around with, but uh, hopefully in the future we get a proper UI for this because it's working amazingly and it definitely deserves it. Every time you start up a game, it will have to pre-compile these shaders here. It takes a little bit of time, and I've noticed that from an SSD, it's going to work a lot faster. I'm just running from a 64 gigabyte SanDisk USB drive. It's an older one, so it's a bit slow. It is 3.0, but it's uh, older gen, so if I had a little bit of a faster SSD or something like that, we can compile these a bit quicker. But once we get in the game, if we press our left analog stick and our view button, which is also known as the back button on the Xbox controller, it's going to bring up our menu. Now there's not much to mess around with here. We can change the resolution and with every game that I'm going to be testing in this video, we're going to be at 1440p. And we can also set out and we can also set the location of our configuration file. And this is where we're going to transfer our Dolphin INI from our Windows PC over to the USB drive. So it'll automatically create that folder for you. That way you've got your controller set up and you're ready to go. Now, obviously, I started out with a really hard game to emulate. Uh, we've got Rogue Squadron 2, and I've got it muted right now just because, you know, copywritten music. But we're going to get into a little bit of gameplay and see how this performs. Now, remember, we're at 1440p right now on the Xbox Series S. Okay, so here it is. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. I just had to edit the INI to show FPS equals true. We've got that set up, so uh, we're at 60, and if you're into GameCube emulation, you know how hard this one could be to run on lower-end systems. Now, I'm not saying that the Series S is a low-end system, but it's definitely an inexpensive system, and with this new port of Dolphin uh, versus the old Retro Arch, we are getting absolutely amazing performance with basically everything that I've tested. I've only gone up to 1440p. Not exactly sure if we could edit the INI and, and go to 4K, because like I mentioned, this monitor is only 1440p but they look great like this, and this is really all I need. Moving over to some Wii emulation. Remember, the Dolphin emulator supports GameCube and Wii. One of my favorite fighting games, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom 1440p. This is one of those games that, with a lot of particles on screen, it can give your system a run for its money, but even when pulling off these special moves, the Series S powers right through it. And yeah, I mean, it's just really awesome to be playing Tatsunoko vs. Capcom on an Xbox.
Next one I wanted to test was Need for Speed Underground 2. And to tell you the truth, back in the day, I didn't play this much on the GameCube. I personally preferred the PS2 version. And this one is really hard to emulate for lower-end CPUs. Now, even on my high-end rig, I still get dips, and that's got a 3080 Ti. So I do think a lot of this performance comes down to, you know, the emulator optimization for this game itself. I've never really been able to achieve perfect performance out of this game here on basically any hardware I've ever tested. But I'll tell you what, one of the best racing games that came out for the GameCube performs amazingly on the Series S. Automotolista, 1440p, 60fps, and I made sure it was raining with this stage here because uh, once we get out here you'll see what I'm talking about. The rain does add more effects on screen and even at 1440p we've got more than enough power to play this game. And of course, we had to take a look at F-Zero GX. Now, the initial stage, the very first stage in this game, does perform really well on a lot of different systems. Lots of particle effects, I mean, it's just a crazy track. And on lower-end CPUs, this can really struggle. I mean, run it like 40 FPS, stuttering all the way through. But on the Series S, not a dip. I haven't seen it drop under 60 FPS at 1440p. I mean, this is really awesome. And the way all of these games performed at 1440p, I wouldn't doubt that a lot of the stuff would run at 4K on the Series S quite well. I'm going to have to try that down the road, but really, I mean, 1440p is upscaled way more than the original GameCube, and it does make these games look really good. Overall, this new port of Dolphin is miles ahead of the Retro Arch Core, so I would highly suggest swapping over to this if you've already got everything set up on your Xbox. It's just going to make a much better experience when it comes to playing GameCube and Wii games. I'm personally really excited to see what happens next with this. Uh, UI would be really nice, and you know, full configuration from within the application would be awesome, but you know, if I had to deal with it like this, I'd be fine with it, because we're getting some really great performance, and it's really not all that hard to set up. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about the performance here? I've yet to test it on the Series X, but I'm sure we'd get better performance at least when upscaling. We really don't need better performance at 1440p, because like we saw, I mean, everything's running at full speed already. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in trying this out in dev mode or even retail, I'll leave some links in the description. For retail, I would highly suggest checking out Gamer13's Discord. And if you just want to pick up the UWP, you can get it from Sir Mangler's GitHub. If you've got any questions or if you want to see any other emulators running on the Series S or Series X, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.